Welcome back to Investigate Joe Rogan, the podcast where I fact check certain episodes of the Joe Rogan Experience. Today I will be looking at episode 1485 with the Crystal Ball and Sagar. Like the last episode I did about Pac-Man, this will be another pretty short investigation of some political commentators. Also like Pac-Man, these two seem fairly reasonable, but they did say a few things that are just wrong that I will point out. The first thing I want to talk about is Sagar says that he thinks America is culturally center-right, but fiscally a bit left. Now, the first part of this is true, but the second part of this is not true. Gallup's annual Values and Beliefs poll, the 2020 version of which was taken just last month, so you really can't get more recent data than this, but it found that 35% of Americans identify as conservative or very conservative when it comes to social issues. 36% describe themselves as moderate, and 29% liberal or very liberal. So from this, I, I would say that it is fair to think that America is culturally center-right. 35% conservative or very conservative and then 36% moderate. Although really, it's pretty close to being an even split three ways between the the three groups, which I thought was interesting. But economically, you cannot say that America is a bit left. 39% of Americans identify as conservative or very conservative when it comes to the economy. 38% are moderate, and only 21% are liberal or very liberal. So if it's only 21%, I don't see how you can say that America is a bit left. Americans are actually more fiscally conservative than they are socially conservative. Fiscal conservatives outnumber fiscal liberals 2 to 1, 39% to 21%, well, about 2 to 1. This poll is so basic and unsexy. However, I found it very interesting for some reason. It has a lot of explanatory power, I guess. Explaining, for instance, why Biden got the nomination. I mean, if 38% of people are fiscal moderates and only 4% are very liberal, then, I mean, Bernie pretty much never stood a chance. He's just outnumbered. This poll also makes me wonder why there aren't more libertarians. Because if 29% of people are socially liberal or very liberal, and 40% are fiscally conservative or very conservative, why isn't there more overlap? Why aren't there more people who fulfill these two stats at the same time and become libertarians? I don't know, but I think it's an interesting question. Sagar also falsely accuses airlines of still firing people, even though they got all the stimulus bucks from the government. And I don't really know where they're getting this from. I think they've probably just misremembered the statements that airlines put out. Because what they really said was not that they are illegally firing people. I could not find anyone claiming this or any evidence of this, but what they have said is that once the stimulus bucks are gone, so are a lot of employees. They've opened, they've straight up said, once we run out of government bucks, a lot of you people are toast. But the, what the bill said was that they can't fire people while they have the money. So they got to wait till it's all gone. Maybe Sagar just sort of misremembered this. Or maybe he just hates airlines. I can't imagine that someone whose first name is Sagar has had great experiences at airports. (laughs) But returning to polls, Crystal Ball says that The Hill did a poll 
that showed people's number one political concern is corruption. But this is actually not true. I found the poll that The Hill did with Harris X, which is some polling company, and it asked the question, what is the issue that concerns you the most? And it came out in February of this year. So again, very recent. And corruption is not number one. The rankings are this. Healthcare comes in at number one, with 18% of people saying that this is the issue that concerns them the most. Then number two is the economy slash jobs with 13%. Then you've got terrorism slash national security with 11%. Then climate change with 8%. Then corruption with just 7%. And then immigration is also tied at 7%. So corruption only ranks as number five. And only 7% of people say it's their number one issue. Healthcare, economy, national security, climate change, corruption. And then those six, including immigration, are 64% of the number one picks. And there is a bunch of random stuff that only has a few percent points, like guns, foreign policy, national debt, etc. So healthcare is actually number one, not corruption. I find these priorities to be pretty whack. I mean, 11% of people's number one concern is national security. I mean, what are they so worried about? And only 8% of people's number one concern is the environment. And only 7% of people's number one concern is corruption, even though Crystal Ball said it was number one. I think it would be better if she was right and it was the number one concern. I'm also confused as to why Crystal Ball got this wrong, because the poll is from The Hill, which is the website they work for. But I guess when you're like a professional political commentator, you have to remember like a bajillion stats at once so that you can hit people with like the Bernie Sanders, you know, the the top 2% of the 1% or 14% and all that stuff. You got to be able to do that. So you probably just kind of forget a bunch of stuff. In my opinion, the most interesting thing Crystal said all episode was that non-voters are the biggest faction in America. They are bigger than Republican voters and Democrat voters. And that's true, And I, but I just thought that was very interesting. I knew voter turnout wasn't very high, but I never really thought of that as being a group. But I guess you could, and it's sort of interesting to do so. Mostly, of course, they do talk about the protests slash riots. And Rogan says that Giuliani is telling the cops to stand down and just letting people loot. Now, the, <laughs> Giuliani is not the mayor of New York. And all three of them do this throughout the whole episode. They keep saying Giuliani when they mean de Blasio. And they, like, blast Giuliani. They're all like, oh, how could Giuliani do this? You know, how could he let people into nursing homes or whatever? And, you know, Giuliani didn't, <laughs> didn't do anything. <laughs> it's all de Blasio. He's getting away with it while people misremember their Italian names. But I'm still not sure what Rogan means exactly. De Blasio did not tell cops to stand down or just, you know, let things happen. When I was looking for what he could be referring to on the Internet, I found conservatives blasting de Blasio for not doing enough and not, you know, cracking down hard on looters. But then you also see a bunch of stuff written by liberals saying, oh, how could de Blasio crack down so hard? It caused police brutality and all this stuff. And I, I really couldn't sort out just what exactly it is that he did wrong. It's like no, nobody is happy with what de Blasio did. He, the guy cannot catch a break. Also around this time, Rogan says that he changes his phone number every six months. Which made me think, you know, who else changes their phone number frequently? What other group of people? Criminals. That's all I'm saying. I'm not making any hard accusations here. But as Eddie Bravo would say, look into it. 
it should be looked into. Does there need to be a congressional investigation? Maybe. I'm not sure. Also around this time, another strange thing is said. Crystal Ball says that Trump, quote, red-lighted with his daddy into nine black people. I really tried my best to figure out what she meant by this, but I just do not know. I searched for every, like, combination of these words on the internet, and I cannot figure out what she's trying to say. I have three ideas for what she means by red-lighted with his daddy into nine black people. One, she is referring to some real thing. However, she butchered her wording so badly that we will simply never know what she meant. Two, she is referring to some sort of super deep, obscure, liberal conspiracy type thing that cannot even be found on the internet. And only the inner circle of professional liberal commentators know what she is talking about. So if I was like a, you know, democratic talking head, I would know what she was talking about. And I'd be like, oh yeah, yeah, the red light incident. Yeah, I'm just not in the know. Or the third option, she had some sort of Biden moment. And this is just an indecipherable word salad that has no meaning. If you know what she means by this, please email me or message me, because I want to know. Later on, Rogan says that statistically, less people are being shot and killed by cops than ever before. And I thought that this would be easy to fact check, but in reality, nobody really knows exactly how many people are shot by cops every year. There is no government system in place to keep track of this, and there is no universally accepted independent count. In 1994, Congress attempted to fix this by telling the Attorney General to start keeping track, but they just sort of casually did not. (laughs) They just sort of ignored the order and just didn't keep track. It's pretty obvious why they would want to do this, but it is inconvenient for someone who is interested in finding out the number. There are various private attempts to keep a count. The most robust and well-known of which seems to be the Washington Post's count, which says that it is about a thousand people per year. And that is just total shooting deaths. It's not unjustified shooting deaths or total deaths. Obviously, it would probably be impossible to try and keep some sort of unjustified death count because, you know, nobody can agree on what is unjustified in many cases. And since this is just shooting deaths, something like the most recent incident wouldn't even be included in this 1,000 a year number. But anyway, since they started in 2015, it's been consistently about a thousand people shot and killed by cops a year. It hasn't gone up or down or anything. So I don't know where Rogan gets this idea that it's going down and that there's less people getting shot by cops now. I couldn't find anything that would suggest that the number is going down. And there's just no data that goes back a significant length of time that could show this. Another incorrect statistic that gets thrown out around this time is Sager says that half of black people are unemployed right now, but it's actually only 16%. I mean, you can, you can just Google it. It's not half. And I get that it is hard to remember stats off the top of your head, as I already talked about. I have learned this making this podcast. Pretty much any time someone throws out a stat, it's going to be wrong. But I mean, this is way off. 16% versus half? 16% is bad, but half is like catastrophically bad. This is just not even close. But here's the real most important thing that happens in this episode. 
At about an hour and 28 minutes in, I, I tweeted like a time-stamped link to this. There is an edit in the episode. Some part of this recording was cut out, and we are just left here to wonder why. What was cut out? Will we ever see the Rogan cut, the full version of this episode? What could they have removed? What are they hiding from the public, the listeners? It's around this time in the episode that Rogan says he, quote, has CTE for sure. So maybe it's related to that. (laughs) Maybe it was some sort of brain problem revelation. Who knows? We may never know. It will just go into the, the lost media archives of spookiness and mystery forever. Very intriguing, of course. Now, towards the end of the episode, they do talk about coronavirus a little bit. And they talk about how a high percent of coronavirus victims had vitamin D deficiency. And they also talk about how lots of people have vitamin D deficiency. But I mean, right there, they just sort of fail to connect the dots as to why so many coronavirus victims have vitamin D deficiency. It's just because lots of people have vitamin D deficiency. It's not really too shocking of a revelation. That is all I have to talk about for episode 1485. Thank you for listening. If you have any suggestions for which episodes need to be investigated, you can email me or message me. Be sure to tell all your friends. Don't let them live in ignorance about the truth of Joe Rogan. <laughs>